there, welcome to Flooring Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Avant Garde's brand new MiG-31 Foxhound. Now, we've been after a decent kit at the Foxhound for absolute ages. And to be honest, when I heard that um, Avant Garde were doing it, I must admit, I was thinking, well, who the hell are they? Secondly, oh God, I was hoping it was going to be somebody decent and all the rest of it. Now, like everybody else, I saw a couple of screenshots and CAD work and got quite excited because it seemed to have all the details we'd be looking for in a modern 148 scale uh, Russian aircraft. And let's face it, we've had some in the past and they've been, yeah, okay, like I'm thinking the Academy uh, SU-27. It's a nice kit, but there's no detail to it at all. It's basically a shell. Okay, so it'd be nice to have a series of decent, 148 scale MiGs and to be honest with Great Wall Hobby they've done some fantastic MiG-29s they've been absolutely beautiful to have somebody come out and now sort of fill in all the gaps as I, so to speak so what we've got here is the MiG-31 this is the BM or the BSM version of it it's said 148 scale and I have not looked in this box okay I must admit we've had a few of these coming for the kit buyers club and absolutely fantastic and when you think this kit is 30 quid for kit buyers club or about 40 quid normally it is a stunning kit so what we've got here is a very large box as you can see very heavy and so usual thing i've uh, got your kit number down here which is 88003 we got a few pictures on the side there as you can see making your way around all the way around on the box as I say, basically the same. All right, now in the box, and I say, I haven't even looked in here. This is the first time I've seen inside, and I've deliberately avoided everything on the internet about it because I want to make my own decisions on this. First things first is, wow, look at that. That is absolutely stuffed. Beautiful boxing. So it looks like we've got the parts, to so say the nose fuselage, weapons fit, and the body and the sprues. And I am very excited about the facts. Okay, so we're gonna pop that there. As always, we'll start with the book. And we say a book, this is a proper, thick, decent manual. Okay, so very nice to see that one there. Okay, so. Looking at the different versions we can do down here, so we've got the BM versions, uh, and then your last one down here is the BSM version. Okay, so you've got four different types, four different markings, as you can see just down there. All right, and then what we can do is we'll work our way through. So the color callouts looks like you've got a bit of a mixture down here. I'm just trying to work out whose colors they actually are. Uh, 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 can't see, but at least we've got. Um, RAL numbers and we've got federal standard codes down here as well and everything else because it tends to be in that sort of you know the uh, aluminium color it doesn't mean too much so just your standard type things just down there obviously a little bit about the aircraft itself and then straight into it so as we can see down here full length full scale engines in there as well some very nice details and we've got obviously everything that's going to make up the areas around it so the wheel wells and everything else pushing down the sides of it beautifully done by the looks of it straight in with the working on the top of the actual fuselage system as you can see there with all the lumps bumps being added so we're guessing that's going to be a one piece which we're thinking is in the box okay and then adding the intakes which obviously the wheel wells double up and the actual full length engines down into the fuselage and how beautifully looking it is too lovely to see we've got a one piece wing under section where it looks like we've got ribbing internal details as well i presume that's just strengthening into it but some very nice details as you can see running away all down there okay two piece obviously on the uppers with the wing section goes in different types of front slats go and put in onto those so obviously you can have deployed or up so it looks like you've got the option there and then obviously with the flaps although it does look like we've got molded straight piece uh, ailerons but at least you can have the flaps deployed or up and then the entire top and bottom section going together all right and then we're working on the front end so we've got the cockpit which amazingly doesn't look too detailed compared with the rest of it. Okay, but that section going in there just like that. Got a nose weight system going in, which is pointing it out, so we're assuming that's in the kit as well. Then we've got the refueling probe set going in, obviously deployed or in. The HUD system's being put in, and then we've got the actual intakes intakes and nose are being fitted in we've got the ram doors going in there as well so you can either have them in position which is very nice then we're working in the back section so we've got an outer part with nice internal details it looked like going on there so we can have it displayed open if we wanted to and then obviously the uh, sections going in usual thing two piece uh, elevators on the back and again you can have them depending which position you want them in obviously down or in the neutral position 
exactly the same for the other side fitting them on and then you've got the actual burner cans going in there as well so putting those in then it's obviously speed brakes and then all the lumps and bumps going underneath as you can imagine there very nice detailed uh, front uh, nose door which is obviously the landing light system and taxi lights that's those going in there and then put in and as you can see a beautiful detail in all of this talking about obviously fitting the undercarriage making sure it's all square and straight and all the bits and pieces lots of that going in there we've got hubbed two-piece wheels all right going in so we don't have resin or rubber wheels thank god okay and then the seats very standard putting together and then drop down doesn't look like unless it's going to be on the next one that's the canopy closed we're hoping for the canopy open there it is okay so canopy closed or open beautiful detail looks like all amongst the inside weapons fit so we've got the big r33s okay being fitted onto this one then we've got obviously the short range uh, r73s and the medium range r77s okay and there we go and that's obviously fitting on there and then we got some just standard so we're giving out the federal standard colors which is quite handy so it's steel right the way over for the outside uh, color system and then obviously we've got the grays and that nice to see they're in a nice universal standard color stencil data as you can imagine it's going to be quite extensive on this one as we can see just down in there and um, pages and pages of stencil data crikey okay and the weapons data as well and then we've got a sprue call out in the back very very promising okay so where are we going to start i tell you what we'll start going through bags and then we'll move on to sprues in a moment so we've got some very nice systems in here okay so in sprue one we have the tails and everything else like that. If we just drop down this top camera just a bit closer, and the side cam is in nice and tight. Okay, so there we go. First of all, you can probably see it as well as I can. We've got some very nice recessed details. Now, my only thing right off the bat here is they look extremely heavy, okay? As in, they look a little bit big for the scale that we're dealing with here. If this is 132nd, I would think, yeah, spot on but this is 148 so i'm thinking that these down the back here are a little big the riveting details scale wise you know you have to be thinking a scale thumb uh so yeah they're quite big all right but that means it'll take a wash up these are very much trench like and everything else and i don't want to be kicking on this kit quite start off the bat with but generally very nice on the upside though we have a very nice no flash i can see anywhere we've got very nice molding system the way that these have gone in sprue gates are quite small quite delicate on so he's not big and chunky and everything else as you can see on these so that's quite nice in there just drag this one out just a touch there we go all right and on the inside as we can see so we've got very nice molding system and the ejector pins are very very flush okay and we've got some nice general details for the insides and everything else like that i like the machining that's the difference between here and in here it actually looks like the inside of aluminium if you know what i mean or like skin of an aircraft all right so very nice indeed as you can see but generally you know you're catching it on the close-up you can see it as well as i can some very nice details on all of these some nice bits going on there okay so on the next one you can see here you can see it probably coming through but you can't feel it uh it's obviously just the molding system there from the temperature but generally this is obviously the lower or is it top no top wing section the underside of the top of the wing section it's going to go down that way so it's the lower half of the wing okay again beautifully detailed and everything else i think it may be just a little bit heavy but I'm impressed with the crispness of it, the sharpness of the kit, no problem at all. We've got control grip down here, looking very nice indeed, and everything else like that. But generally, you can probably catch it in there, catch it on the light on the close-up, looking very, very good. And then down on the inside, it's nice to see that we have got the strengthening bars and the ribbing work going in there. Makes you wonder how accurate that is. Okay, I'm assuming it probably must be roughly about that. So you could open this guy up and do some detailed work. All the ejector pins look like they're sunk. None of them are raised, which is a nice touch, which means we won't have any trouble with things going together uh, and everything else like that. So generally, very impressed, very nice. Uh, have a look at the top half of this beast. Okay, 
So, here. Okay. Thing you notice with it is the plastic is uh, what we said about recently. Certain kits I've been working on, the plastic seems quite soft. This is hard, strong. I should think easy to work with, easy to sand plastic. So okay, looking at the top, as you can see, you can probably see what I'm seeing. Again, if I'm honest, it looks a little bit heavy the detailing but i think it will be all right uh, you know from a scale point of view this is going to be a big jet okay it's nice that this is all reinforced as you can see all down here again be great for you scratch builders doing something out here see nice locating tabs as well these are for the slats going in the front end and everything else like that again no sign of flash any problems no marring in fact it's extremely high quality very very nice indeed no problem with any of that at all really very nice. Okay, let's have a look in some of the smaller parts. Okay, so down in here we've got a few parts. So we've got some duplicates. So this is your engines, uh, your sort of afterburner rings, things like that. We've got our tyres and everything else going on down here. Again, we've got some nice details on the inside. You can see them all the way around in there. No problem with those at all. Everything else, like the burner ring, looking very nicely molded, no problem. Obviously we've got compressor blades, various things going down here. They're nice. Again, the wheels, the tires actually look quite nice. No writing on them or anything else, they're plain. External hubs looking good. Uh, and then you've got the internals. Nose wheel system down here as well. Very nice. All the plastic is a little bit chunky. Nothing's very delicate. Everything looks very solid. Uh, which is unusual on a 148 scale. Normally they tend to be, you know, these things can break and that. These don't look like they're going to break. Okay, so that's very nice indeed. Okay, so we've got more duplicates down here. We've just got the seats we can have a quick look at. Okay, so as you can see, some nice details down in there. No problem with that. Some nice rear details, cushionings. Very good. No, as I say, I don't know what I was expecting. Uh, in some ways, I'm a bit two ways with this at the moment. I'm on the fence purely because I was expecting it to be when I first heard about it, and I was thinking, right, you know, avant garde kit, okay, big job, you know, really what it's going to be like. Now I've got it in my hands, I'm thinking it's fantastic, but I don't know, it's just a little bit chunky. It's a chunky aircraft, don't get me wrong, it's just that. I don't know, I might have been expecting something a little bit else. Okay, this is where we want to see some of these smaller internal details. So we've got some very nice internals going on down here, as you can probably see with this ribbing stuff. This is going to be the actual main gear well itself. Very nice details on the outside of the engine. Not a great deal of plumbing running around the outside, okay, uh, that's been moulded it in. Amazingly, not that you're going to see it, but we are seamless. Uh, sorry, ejector pinless, I should say, on the inside, which is a very nice touch, which I know I've been banging on about ejector pins recently, and people have taken it a little bit to heart. Um, it's not that I'm kicking companies for having ejector pins because it's part of the molding process and everything else, I accept that. It's just some of the better kits these days don't do it. <laughs> you know, this is an exact example of that, you know, this kit doesn't have it. All right, now the cockpit itself, as we can see down here, a little bit sparse on detail. A little bit sparse in the actual refinement of it as well okay but again some nice work down here uh, for this ribbing texture uh, and everything else but the cockpit is a little bit basic i can imagine the aftermarket guys will jump on this if they haven't already with sort of gusto really because there's a lot that can be done in here all right but generally you can see very nice parts all of them very clean crisp we've got no flash that i've seen anywhere on this kit Okay, this is the nose weight. So you have two bars, two ingots. Okay, quite a nice touch. All right, and we got. So our last major big screw before we get into the sort of finer moldings. Okay, so, all right, this is all your gear and stuff down here. And I have to say, very nicely, got a tiny bit of flash, which is the first flash I've seen just down here on these smaller parts, which is, you know, no mean feat, seeing as it's the first bits we've actually seen, but he's got a tiny bit of flash just down in here. But generally, as you can see, if we just run it past the close up, you can see it's very nicely done. No problem with any of these. As you can 
can see, uh, I'm just trying to, to be honest, I'm looking for faults. I'm trying to find something to pick a fault with it now and I'm struggling. Little things I do like this here, internal details, um, you probably see, these are the internal details for the cockpit, okay, front and rear. Very nicely done because, as I said, normally it's just molded in the glass and everything else from most companies. We've got full done mirrors, as you can see down in here, already to go in. The cockpit instrument panels look quite nice anyway, so uh, makes up for the side wells. Generally, the actual gear itself got a little bit of burring between the layers, but nothing you would go mad about. We have got the odd little ejector pin mark, though, unfortunately, down in this main gear. We can see it down here, and we have got ejector pins as well, which is funny when you see them in these types of places in the speed brakes, which I'm surprised they're in there because they're not in other major parts we would worry about, but the speed brakes have got them now. It wouldn't take a rocket scientist to do a quick fill job on some styrene filler in there uh, or something else like that just to self-level that out, but as I say, it's a shame it's in there, and it's a shame that the gear's got them in some quite awkward places. So, you know, it would might be quicker to get an aftermarket metal gear set shall we say uh, again not that you'll see them but there's some down in here and everything else so a few little eject pins in some nasty places i'd like to have not seen but everywhere else all the major ones i'm not that worried about they all seem to be quite nice indeed okay at least we haven't got them in wheel wells and things like that on our gear doors okay front 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 what is that what were you thinking by putting an ejector pin smack bang in the mill? There's one there and one there. Like, what? Why would you do that? You've, you know, you've ruined it now for me. That's not acceptable to put an ejector pin like that. I would prefer it to be raised, if I'm honest. I could have just sand it flush, but because it's sunk as well, that's a real pain. Now, I know it's going to be on the underside. This here are these guys down here. So, they are going to face inwards, or I hope to God they face inwards, so you're not going to notice them because they're going to be in here, all right? But why put them on there at all when you can do slats with nothing on and we've got these huge guys here, unless they're supposed to be on there, but surely not. That looks like an ejector pin to me, all right? But generally, nowhere else has got them apart from those, all right? But again, very nice details, maybe a little bit thick. Just thinking a little bit trench-like on those. Okay, we've got, I won't bother getting these out. Weapons pylons, as you can see, very straightforward. Standard one-piece molding for those. Okay, right, so in box number one, very nicely packaged. We have the underside. So this is the inside pit, okay. Again, it's quite heavy. It's a big, you know, let's face fact, when this thing's done, it's gonna be a lump. I don't know if it's got the size on the box, but I've got to think, it's gonna be 50 odd centimeters. I imagine by the time you put the nose on, yeah, it's gonna be getting near 50 centimeters, isn't it, I would have thought. So, you know, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be chunky. I'm impressed by this framework and all this stuff down in here, that really, does give it some strength and some sort of, you know, some sort of rigidity in the kit. Kit, you know, scratch builders, you want to open up panels of that, it lends itself beautifully with all this detail in here without it getting all sort of falling apart on you. But it's just a little bit heavy, the panoramic details and the riveting details. It is sort of thumb size, I think, by scale uh, and everything else. But yeah, it's there, it's all good, it's all there. It's all a very nice starting point indeed. Okay, so let's have a look at the nose. For a tornado. Right. A, um, commonly what we call slip moulding on this one because it's actually on the inside and then slides out. It's like a multi ejection pin part all in one, which is really nice because what happens then, you don't get a seam line anywhere on this one. Okay, and this will be hidden in the intakes as they come forward, so that's not a problem, everything else like that. Very, very nicely done. When we say slip molding, basically, it parts come in, it's injected, and then they slide out of the way, and then this falls out of the way. Okay, very, very technical to do. 
very nice to see it on this one. I know there's a lot of berries in there, but doesn't that look like a tornado or is that just me? That just looks like a Tonka front, doesn't it? If you stuck that now on the front of a tornado, you'd be fine. Okay, but generally I have to say very, very impressed with that. That's really, really nice. Got a seam line running obviously down the middle of this guy. Uh, well, it's not a problem. Very straightforward. I was looking, I thought I saw a sink mark on it, but I can't see it now. Yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, so last up, the weapons fits, which are, again, very reminiscent of the Great War Hobbies kits. So down in here, we won't bother getting these out. You can see we've got the short range infrared R73s. We've got R33s. Okay. Beautifully done. These one piece molds like this. And they are, I think it's going to deserve a get one of these out. As I say, Great Wall started this off. And uh, <clears throat> they're sort of becoming the standard now. But generally, that is quite something else. Beautifully done. Very, very, very nice. Now that I do like. Beautiful. Obviously it's the uh, Russian version of the Phoenix. Okay. Again, we we'll never get in the back of ever again. Okay, and then down here we've got the uh, 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 A12s. Very nice indeed. I do like the one piece. Be a shame that these little fins here on the tail aren't actually in photo etch. That's the only thing I would like to have seen. Okay, speaking of photo etch, down in here we have the clear box. Okay, so <clears throat> nice touch. We have one piece canopy for the closed. Okay, and then we have two pieces for the open. And I have to say, that does look very, very nice, very clear. Got no real distortion on any of those. They are all nice and clear. We've got no top distortion, obviously a little down the sides. All the lights, lenses, and everything else like that are crystal clear, as is all the other parts on this one. I have to say, very, very impressed. So what we call them these, AMK or Avant-Garde Models Pass. I don't know what their proper name is, but we'll try and get these back in a sticky bag, which is always a pain. Quick tip, stick them down, fold over, slide in. So it all lumps and bumps and then fall off, then stick back. Okay, last up. A couple of little bit of photo etch over there and there we've got a couple of pull handles and I assume it's a brace plate for something, probably gear. Alright, and then last up, by no means least, we have this way just because I don't want to ruin the decals. So we have down here, very nice. So obviously this is obviously your stencil data as you can imagine and it sort of goes on and on and on and on and on. Uh, looks pretty good, a little bit thick maybe, but generally I think that's very nice indeed. No problem at all. Actually it doesn't look too thick. You see these guys up here, they're, you know, catch them in the light. You can see it, they're not actually too bad. They look thicker than they are I think. Very nice indeed, okay. Um, so we've got your standard Russian stars with the blue interior. These are standard ones, they're not pre-faded or anything else like that, which is, you know, obviously you can get aftermarket ones if you want to have the more faded look to it. And generally all the markings are all nicely in register, can't see any problems with any of those at all. So, there we go. Well, we've been waiting a long time for this particular kit to come along. It's here at last. If you're a Russian fan, you're going to go and get this kit, no matter what I say about it anyway. And I have to say, 
from a box review, and this is all this is. Um, been speaking about reviews a lot to a couple of people recently, and as I say, it's just what I see in a box. It's got, you know, it might not even go together for all I know. Okay, but I'm doing it from what I see, my initial thoughts of looking at lots of styrene, uh, probably more than a lot of normal people see, uh, and I tend to pick up on things. This one immediately jumps out that perhaps the uh, panel line detail is a little bit overdone. It's a little bit trenchified uh, and everything else. I'd like to have seen it more refined, but generally the level of detail is very sort of, you know, it's constant, it's universal. All the panel lines are the same depth no matter where they are. So it's not like some are trenched out, some are thinner, some are finer, and all the rest of it. A panel line is a panel line on this kit and they are all the same widths, okay? So generally I have to say, you know, that would be my only real criticism to it. The rest of it, I can't fault. I love the way it's got a full interior detail with it, with full length engines. The intakes, things like that, it's a big part on this particular kit. It's a big engine. I can imagine the scratch builders pulling out an engine out the back and doing various things to it. It would make a very nice project to work on and do something a little bit special with it. But there we go. That is AMK's or Avangard Models. Latest one, that's the 148th MiG-31 Foxhound.